Hey guys, Gordon here with Scott and Dickey, and today we're going to start a new project. We're going to talk a little bit about engine control management, um, specifically on the Gen 3 Hemi. Anybody that's seen our videos or any videos of my car kind of know that it has a little bit of a hard time 60 foot and are getting out of the hole just because of the weight. Um, factory engine control management has came a long ways, especially since the onset of HP tuners and EFI Live and all the companies that allow you to do um, change parameters inside of the engine control module. But we've really kind of reached the limit. That's where Rick from Big Three Racing has stepped up with his new product, and it is the gateway. And what this gateway does is it allows the rest of the car to talk to this. And this is a dominator from Holly. And this thing has a lot of features that we're going to explore on how to make the how to make the car 60 foot. We're going to do a lot of cool things with the uh, G sensors and a lot of things that we can help the car 60 foot with launch control and everything else. And what this is, we're going to go through the ins the whole install process and some of the setup with uh, and the process that we do with Rick also. Uh, but basically what he does is he sends you this gateway and a harness. And this harness plugs into the gateway and then plugs in where the PCM goes. And the factory PCM will be no more. But the rest of the car will still retain all of the AC and the power windows and the radio and the GPS and everything else that the car would normally lose when you go to an aftermarket ECM. So this gateway is really cool. So along with Rick from Big 3 Racing, we want to thank... Alex from Holly for getting us set up with this lightweight dominator and all of the parts that go with it. Um, we will be going over all of this stuff, including the G-Shock sensors or the G-axis sensor and all the other stuff that we're going to install here. A little longer than a few minutes later. Hey guys, Gordon with Scott and Dickey here and we're at Moparty 2025 and I've got Rick Trunkett from Big 3 Racing here and we're going to talk about his new gateway that we got on our R&D car. Uh, and I'm going to let him take take the lead on this one. He's going to tell us all about his gateway and all of the features and everything. So I'll let him take it from here. Uh, so what actually I did, I, I teamed with Race Products that's been doing uh, what they call the gateway now for in other cars, Fords and GM for the last about five or six years. And I said, hey, we need to do this for the Hellcat and the Hemi market. Uh, and uh, if I get you a car and, and, and do all the leg work, can we do it? And uh, we agreed to do it. So over the last year and a half, We've been developing this product, and it's called the Gateway. Uh, all it really is is a little box that we put in the in the car uh, that allows us to put a Holly Dominator or Terminator X in the car and give you full control over all that horsepower that you're making without losing all your creature comforts that would actually make it a car. So your SRT pages still work, your dash still works, all your gauges still work, and everything is fed through the Holly. Um, we do it through what's called the Gateway module with a simple install that goes with the factory computer is right here. It's a plug and play setup. Uh, and now we're able to control all that horsepower. Uh, one thing that I noticed kind of coming into this market is that it's not hard to make a whole lot of horsepower. They, sometimes a lot of guys struggle in controlling that horsepower. And there's a lot of internal nannies in the factory tuning that doesn't allow you to really get a consistent run down the track every right. single time. So one thing I also want to hit on that this is a off-road use, non-emissions compliant unit but we made it similar to how the the demons the original demons work we made it so that the install is easy enough to have to, after it's fully installed that you can put your factory ecu in drive it on the street be completely emissions legal drive it to the racetrack about three bolts in about 15 minutes of your time put the race products uh, ecu back in it or the gateway back in it and now you're uh, running and tuning and racing so you could drive on the street emissions legal race uh non-emissions legal for off-road use only so Obviously, you use that as your own discretion, however you want to use that, but this is for not off-road, non-use, non-emissions, use only. So, I uh, have to throw that disclaimer in for everybody. All right, so, if you look at it, this thing's, all it is, is it's basically an ECM emulator. It sits where the ECM usually Correct. goes, yep. uses the factory wiring harness, and you'll end up taking the dominator and you'll put it inside of the fender. There's a... There's a bracket that goes inside of here and the dominator sits inside of this fender right behind here. It's not a hard install. It's a pass through wires right here. Um, drill one hole, 
Drill and one hole yeah, is super could, easy. Yeah, you could be up and running without any adding extra features like boost control or two-step wiring or stuff like that. You could be up and running within two hours um, is, is what we could do it. But generally speaking, plan a day in the garage if you're doing it at home because we actually give you all the features that Holly EFI gives you, which is no rules tuning is what I say. We could, If you could think it up, you can do it. Whether it's flex field tuning, boost control, we could control the throttle body, we can make it an electronic throttle stop, control how fast you come into the throttle, uh, two-step rev limiters, uh, like I was saying, the flex fuel control where you could take a blower, like this is running say 25 pounds of boost, and when you pour 93 in it, we can limit it down to only running 10 pounds of boost. So you could have best of both worlds without switching pulleys, getting your hands dirty, or even opening up the hood. Man, do you want to show them how to do that feature? That's yes. pretty cool. Yeah. So, so let's let's yeah. show that. Let's show them how to do that. So when we're going to a full standalone engine management, or in this case, Holly EFI, you get rid of, of any of, of the the BS that the factory ECU gives you. All the safeties, all the nannies, and all the extra tables that don't really mean anything. Which means we're not tricking it to do what we want it to do. We're not trying to scale things. We're not trying to. To, uh, find tables that aren't defined yet. There's the, everything is there. The documentation on how to do it is, which means uh, this opens up a path for self-tuning and being self-sufficient on your race car, which is something that this industry I feel kind of lacks. You're not married to a, a, a specific tuner. Now, there's multiple great tuners out there that help you get started, but we we have it to a point where you could get in there, edit some of the smaller tables yourself, and get your car down the track. So you're not waiting on an email or or someone that's you know not not going to respond. So uh, this puts the power in your hands, uh, which is something I think that this industry kind of needed. But, so let's talk about power management. Will this thing make more power over a factory ECU? Probably not. There, if you, we put them side by side on the dyno, if they both have the same fuel and the same spark and the same tune, they're gonna make this, this roughly the same power. But it's not about making more horsepower in this situation, it's about controlling all that horsepower. Obviously, it's easy to make 1500 plus horsepower on these cars, it's not easy to control that horsepower. So what we did, we added some features. We were able to get some data from the ABS module, like the slip data, and we are able to control uh, ignition timing or throttle position, or however you want to do it, to control for traction control. We also have control over the throttle body and the bypass separately from each other, which means that we can control, uh, start a timer off of a two-step or off your foot brake, and start a timer to decide how long or when the boost actually rolls in. So we actually do have boost control on one of these big blower cars. And that's one, that is probably the best way of manning to, manning to them. Prior to this, a lot of guys were using ignition timing only. The issue with using ignition timing only on a big positive display as a supercharger like that is that there's a small window where it works and it doesn't work. And you'll run into where you pull two degrees, it stumbles, you put the two degrees back in it, it blows the tires off. And the way that we're controlling time or controlling boost or controlling power is gonna be off throttle management. So, if you think about uh, what you're doing now, a lot of guys will get on the foot brake and they'll hold the throttle state like 20% of the pedal. And when the light goes green, they'll switch and they'll roll into the throttle. If the track isn't good, they may roll into the throttle a little bit slower, or if the track's good, they may try to hit it a little bit faster. The problem with doing that is that you're very inconsistent. You are now deciding your foot and we don't have a, a set time on that. We actually have a table uh, that we developed and, and, and again, there's no rules. This is just one that, that I came up with uh, and Gordon modified to how he likes it on his car and then you can modify it how you like your car is that we just put a simple position switch which you'll probably get a little clip of it's a, a 12 position switch and what that is is different throttle ramps so you get on the two step on the foot brake you hold your foot to the floor you're not holding it at the position you want you hold it the, the ECU then has the logic inside it to say hey be at 20 percent be at 30 percent be at 40 percent and when, when you let off the brake a timer starts to how long you let off that brake and it'll roll into the throttle for you and as we uh, turn up that knob it rolls into it more faster and more aggressive and it's all user adjustable in the software or you set up 12 different positions and it, you just hit the switch and that's how I set my customers up is that hey go up for a more aggressive launch go down for a less aggressive launch we could also change two-step RPM off of that we could change we could change that that launch control and how much it is based off of ethanol content with a flex fuel sensor uh, as true as well as we can do true flex field tuning. So in this table is just a throttle throttle offset. So it's it's you're at full throttle and the and the simple table. There's no airflow tables. There's no 15 different PID tables to go through. You have a simple table that says, hey, what's my pedal position at and what's my throttle position at. So those throttle blasters and those boxes, you could make it roll into the throttle faster off throttle position or slower. Like we have a nice sweep which takes a big giant throttle body and makes it easy to drive as well. So 
we could put a 200 millimeter throttle body on this thing and make it drive like a pussycat going down the road until you roll into the throttle. So again, big throttle bodies, big cams, tuning those is a, is a thing of the, is a past with this system now. So we have our throttle. Right here you'll see we're at 80% throttle, which and up is 100% throttle position. So 80% pedal, 100% throttle. We then have a table, a 2D table in our advanced tuning, which we'll talk about, that has our launch control. And this is an offset. So when you roll in the throttle, you go full throttle. And if you're on uh, two and a half volts of that position, it takes 65% out. So the math is that you'll be at 45% throttle. And in this particular function section here, by the time you get to 1.7 seconds, you're full throttle. So your, your foot is physically on the floor and you let off the brake, it does it for you. So it will do the same thing every single time, not you deciding, you know, or you screwed up a little bit. And then you, you get better 60 foot times, you get, it's just better, you get better reaction times and you get to stay on your, your racing mojo, like I call it, you don't get screwed up. One, one thing that I do like is that uh, when you have the switch, you can be watching the cars that are going in front of you. And if you've got it on, on a, let's say that it, it made a good hit earlier in the day, uh, and you still got it on that setting, but it looks like the track has let go. You can actually just turn it down right there, hit it, a, hit it a couple notches down, and now we're not putting as much power on the 60. And maybe we'll actually get down the track because we can watch the other ones and we can make live changes right then. Yeah, we're not stopping and flashing. We're, you, do, you could be sitting there in the burnout box and just see the last guy burn, spun the tires and the track, and, the, and your guy that's lining up is giving you the no. And, and, and normally you're like, well, the tune-up's in there. No, we just go and we just flip the switch down a few notches and take some power out. And eventually you'll, you'll know, we have cars yeah. down that we know what the 60 foot time is gonna be for each section, for, for, each, for each position. So zero would maybe a one four to, I've got a guy that goes from one four to a one, uh, like a one one nine or a one one eight or one eighteen sixty 60 yeah. foot time, depending on which, which position we have it on. So, so on top of that, we have true flex fuel tuning which means we put a GM style flex fuel sensor in it. It's not guessing off of the O2 sensors like, like the patch for HP tuners does. We actually have a physical sensor. Uh, we know what the ethanol content is. We can control the boost based off ethanol content. Like I was saying, if you have, a, uh, if you have the, thing, the blower pulley for max effort, 25 pounds of boost, but you want to cruise around on 93, we will then limit the boost either being the bypass or throttle position to how much boost is could around on 93. So if you're on 10% ethanol, which is a straight normal 93 pump gas, we can limit the throttle to only be half throttle, which is normally about half the boost that it would make. So it might be 12 pounds of boost on 93. And then say you got E50, we could roll in that throttle to give you a little bit more, and you might get 16 or 17 pounds on E50. And on full E85, you might have, you have it set up to uh, run your full 25 or 22 pounds of boost or whatever your max effort is on that blower. We actually have boost control now on a positive displacement blower, which is nothing that I, that I know that anyone can do. Yeah actual boost control on a positive spacement blower, which is something that is uh, that this platform with the big blower is definitely needed. So yeah. really excited about that. Within Holly, you have your fuel map, you have a single timing map, you've got modifiers in it. You have considerably a lot less tables that do a whole lot more. So when you tell it what to do, it does it. There's no tricking, there's no scaling. We could also run 16 injectors. We could run methanol on it. We go on higher, low impedance injectors. There, there is no rules anymore. There's no limitations on what you can do. And that's where I get really excited is thinking outside the box and doing things that we couldn't do before. Uh, this is honestly like not to, uh, to toot my own horn. This is a true game changer for this platform. It really is. Uh, we've got a lot of cars out there. Everybody that I've been working with so far has had great success with it. Maybe a little bit of a learning curve for some guys getting used to it, trying to get out of the OEM tuning mindset to the aftermarket tuning mindset, because it's two different mindsets, you yeah, know? Right. Um, where you're used to being restricted and you're no longer restricted. So there's no tricking. We just, well, you want to do it? We do it. And if anything you could think of, and we went back and forth on ideas and it's like, hey, how do I do this? Well, we just make a table or we tell it when this happens, right. this other thing happens. Again, uh, shift lights you can, you can control. Um, we were able, like I was saying, we, we grabbed slip data from the ABS module, which we could feed back into the, it feedbacks into the Holly for traction control, which works very well, by the way. I it have also, a video on my YouTube channel where I, I showed an example of that. The, uh, the launch control where you use. Yeah, yeah. So we have it set up where you don't have to wire anything independently. If you just hold your foot to the floor on the brake, tap the resume button, it'll enable the launch control. So there's no going through the dash and setting all kinds of parameters or trying to do weird stuff. Um, another cool thing that we did 
uh, is prior to, like, guys I want to go to like a Turbo 400 or a Power right. Glide and these are the more race car guys. Prior to that, it was a huge ordeal of changing an RF hub, programming, yeah. getting modules tricked, and on the newer cars, it made it really hard. Uh, we actually have a box that works conjunction with this that just plugs into where you unplug your factory 8HP, you plug into the same connector, and then you wire a couple wires to your aftermarket shifter, so it says it's in reverse, it says it's in drive, there's no programming, there's no tricks, uh, and now Very you cool. can put a Turbo 400 in one of these cars um, without completely tricking it. We did test it to work with the gateway. It will start and run on a stock ECU, but I haven't took it any further than that. But if you uh, Turbo 400 pair with the gateway, then now a simple install. And we're able to actually make your paddle shift, your, if it's a turbo guy that are doing that, one paddle is your trans brake, the other one's your bump. So uh, you, don't even have to cool. put, yeah, you don't even have to put butt, uh, paddles on it. Plus we have some other cool things in the work right now. Uh, we got 802 uh, box coming out that right, goes through Canvas. So if you're super serious, you want to put eight oxygen sensor on it, we could do that. EGTs, anything on Holly's EFI line or any aftermarket that works with Holly EFI right. will work with this. So um, no, no issues. I got a cool one coming out. We're doing dual fuel. So I got a, a twin turbo track hawk we're building right now where I had a custom billet intake made that's got 16 injectors. Um, and we're going to run the factory fuel system and it's going to run an idle on 93. We were building a custom fuel cell in the back and it's going to switch itself over to run on methanol under boost only and then switch itself back so Very but cool. and all your factory stuff's working it's not this isn't a race car where there's a switch panel screwed to the dash we're not piggybacking any other ecu or any other system into it we're not tricking things we're not we're literally a full standalone engine management now and that this talks with the rest of the can buses and functions the car cool. for the most of the part doesn't know the stock ecu is not in it Right. It's pretty awesome. Very cool. Well, I, I really appreciate you talking about this no, and everything. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> if you want to check this out, you can either check it out on our website or Big Three Racing. We we can get you set up with the Gateway. We can get you set up with all the Holly stuff. If you got any questions, give me or Rick a call, and we can get you set up. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.